10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And liftoff. The only thing cooler than a rocket launch is a rocket launch with Iron Man in it. I wonder if that's possible. Hmm. Hey folks, Dave here. Let's talk about rockets, toys, and photography. So on December 18th, 2021, I got a chance to shoot an actual rocket launch. And it's the first time I got to shoot a rocket and it was incredibly exciting. I was very fortunate to come away with this image here. What this is, is the arch of the rocket streak as it launched from the launch pad up into the upper atmosphere. And me being me, I decided to put an Iron Man action figure in front of it because, you know, toy photographer. Hello. Now I shoot toys, I shoot toys all the time, but I've never shot a rocket before. And it's always been a dream of mine to be able to shoot a rocket because space is awesome. I'm a big fan of space. I think space exploration is one of the pinnacles of human achievement. And I'm really, really stoked that we're starting to starting on that journey during my lifetime to actually put effort into putting humans into space and trying to put humans on the moon again and over to Mars. And it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and I wanted to shoot a rocket launch for a long time, but I never really had the opportunity because most rockets get launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida. And when I was growing up, it was in Canada. I wasn't gonna see a launch there. And now that I live in North Carolina, it's still a nine hour drive to Cape Canaveral. So it's a very difficult to see a launch. This past Christmas, uh, I went on a trip with my family to Florida for two weeks. I think you see where you're going with this. I'm in Florida. I have some time on my hands. I wonder if there's a rocket launch. So I looked up the schedule and indeed there was a rocket launch on December 18th. And that rocket launch had my name all over it. Um, the launch itself is from SpaceX. It was a Falcon 9 rocket that was launching at night, about 11 p.m. That was my one chance to see a rocket launch. I decided to make the most of it. Now going into this, I had very little expectations. I wanted to try to shoot it, but I know how tricky it can be. I was gonna be completely happy just being able to witness the rocket launch into space. If I could get it on camera, that would be icing on the cake. Now, me being me, I don't like to go halfway. So if I'm gonna get out my camera and I normally shoot toys and there's a rocket in front of me, the logical conclusion is let's shoot a toy with a rocket launch behind it. Awesome. That turns out to be really, really freaking difficult. I'm talking, holy crap, is it hard photography to do. SpaceX is not going to back up the rocket and launch again if you miss your shot. You got one chance to do it in. You can't really get that close to the rocket, which makes a lot of sense. It's a big explodey thing at the back end. Lots of fire, lots of flame, lots of legal liability, and NASA ain't going to let you anywhere near that thing. As a civilian without any special access, you're shooting it from a long way back. In fact, for this shot, I got about as close as I could be. So if you look at the map, you'll see that the rocket launch is up here on rocket launch. Uh, I think it's pad LC40, I believe it's called. And I was way down here at this park on Cocoa Beach. And if you do the, the measurements, you'll see that that's about 17 kilometers or 10, 11 miles. What that means is you can't actually see where the rocket is. So you have to guess, which is a little bit insane for photography. Just guessing where you're gonna, where your shot's gonna come from. There are actually some tools that allow you to visualize these. One is flightclub.io, and that allows you to plug in your camera settings, your location, and the particular rocket mission, and it will show on a map the rocket arc and all the positionings that you need to set your camera up. I wanted to get the entire streak of this rocket. I just don't want one point in time. I want to see the glow of the engines from the time it launches to the time that the main engine gets cut off and the first stage drops away. And it is a, encompasses a massive amount of space. Because you think about it, the rocket's literally going into space. Uh, when that engine cuts off, it could be 70, 80 miles high. And who knows how many hundreds of kilometers or hundreds of miles downrange. So there's a huge swath to cover. 
Um, in fact, uh, my lens, the widest lens I had, which is a 12 millimeter lens, which is a pretty dang wide lens, it was barely enough to cover it. That means there's no wiggle room. I can't just kind of shoot wide and go in because I'm as wide as I possibly can and it barely fits. So that's shooting rockets in and of itself. And night photography has its own special problems in that the shutter is open for a long period of time. In this case, the, the shutter is open for three minutes. So that means a lot of trial and error, which just takes time to do. Um, like every time you try it, it's three minutes to make sure your exposure is correct. Um, and then your framing is correct. So that is what makes rocket photography hard. Now, when you add toys like Iron Man here, you're also adding all the complexities of shooting toys, making sure Iron Man here is properly um, centered in the frame. He's posed properly. He's lit properly and he's in focus. All of those things combined, plus the rocket. As you can see, this is a complicated shoot. So let's talk strategy. I had two strategies going into this. Plan A was to try to get everything all in one frame. So you have the rocket launch, you put Iron Man in the right spot so he looks correct. And then when the rocket launches, you hit the shutter button and wait for the rocket to go out of frame. And hopefully all that will lead to one shot. Plan B, and there's nothing more official than a plan B. Plan B was to do it in two stages. First was to take Iron Man and position him on the beach in the sand in the pose that I wanted him into and take his shot and just leave that as is. Then I would take another shot of the rocket streak and then in post I would merge the two together and come up with a shot. As it turns out, even though I tried plan A, plan B is the way to go. So let's talk about what happened and what went wrong. So I was actually shooting with a friend of mine named Eric Kuna, and he is an amazing rocket photographer. He lives in Florida, and he's been shooting rockets for a while now. And if you look at his Instagram, you can see that he has some amazing shots um, of rockets. And he actually has pad access, so we can get up close and personal and get uh, really, really close-up shots of rockets launching. I was telling him about what my plans were, um, and then he offered to set up one of his cameras as a backup. So if plan A didn't work, then plan B would still be in effect. So that made me much more confident that I could try plan A. It, I quickly realized that plan A was gonna have some problems, but I stuck with it because I'm a stubborn man. One thing I was noticing was that Iron Man was not big enough in frame for focus. I'm gonna step outside and set up a demonstration as to why these two things are actually conflicting. So I've come out to my backyard to give you a demonstration of why toy photography and rocket photography are incompatible. At least they're, they don't play well with each other. And that has to do with how depths of field work and a concept called uh, the hyperfocal point. So let me uh, show the demonstration and then I'll explain exactly what all this means. So what we have here is a process that mimics what the conditions on the ground of the rocket launch actually were. I had my camera on a platypod with Iron Man directly in front of him, off in the distance. This retaining wall here is going to be the analog for the rocket launch. Just in your mind, picture a rocket streak going all the way through there. Um, so that is roughly analog, obviously, that distance is way farther than in real life than is here, but for the purposes it will do. So I have this framed up so Iron Man is the same size in frame as it is in the final image. And if I take the shot here and you zoom in, you can see that Iron Man is in focus, but the background is becoming out of focus. And in the real world, because the distances are so much farther, it's going to be even more out of focus uh, in, in reality. If I move Iron Man farther away, this is closer to what um, was actually um, the situation on the ground. Um, and if I take this shot, you'll notice that Iron Man is much smaller in frame. However, everything from Iron Man all the way back to the retaining wall is in focus. However, Iron Man is way too small in frame. So the reason for this is a concept called the hyperfocal distance. And what that is, is that the hyperfocal distance for a lens 
With my lens, the hyperfocal distance is actually about two feet away. Anything after that will all be in focus. So if you have an object at the hypofocal distance, everything from there to infinity is in focus, which is exactly what you want for a rocket launch with a toy in it because you want Iron Man at front to be in focus and the rocket and the back end be in, to be in focus. To get Iron Man large enough in frame, you have to move him closer than the hyperfocal distance. And that means that the depth of field is no longer to infinity, but just to a much smaller range, which screws up the focusing for the shot. Um, and that is I, essentially the problem. As you can see in my demonstration, if I put that lens with Iron Man two feet away, he's very, very small in frame, too small in frame for to make him look realistic. You could control this in theory by adjusting the f-stop to be much lower so basically lowering the uh, aperture of the, of the lens the problem with that is is the rocket launch is shooting at night and you have to be able to capture the light of the streak and if you drop the uh, aperture down you, you are potentially not collecting all the light you need so you really have to have the uh the f-stop at around 11 um, f10 f11 if you go to like f22 to kind of increase the uh, depth of field you're going to lose the light in the back end and you're, you're no better off so you're really tied to what the rocket launch parameters are for the camera and you have to fit the toy within those parameters to really make this work there is a concept called focus stacking which would make this work where you take a single shot of iron man up close in focus and then you take another shot of the rocket streak in focus and then you merge the two and that is a valid process called high, uh, focus stacking and i actually have a video on that which i'll link to up there and down in the description that explains how uh, focus stacking works but it does make the idea of taking a single shot to have both a toy and a rocket streak at the appropriate sizes in the same frame kind of impossible, at least with the gear I have. So when it came time to actually shoot the rocket, I had a remote trigger in my hand and I hit the button. And when I did, the remote trigger fell apart in my hand. The camera shutter did not go off and I didn't get anything in my camera. And that kind of sucked. Eric's camera did capture a streak. So we lucked out in that I had enough for plan B. It wasn't, it wasn't an intentional plan B, but you know, I'll take it. So I had the foreground shot of Iron Man uh, properly exposed. Then I have the streak also properly exposed. So all I had to do was composite it together in Photoshop to come up with the final image. Let's take a look at how I did that. So this is the final image that you've seen before. Let's break it down to see how I actually turned those two pieces into this uh, merge piece. So I'll just turn off all the layers here. Then I will expand the smart object. So this is how I started with the shots from my camera is this Iron Man here and he's very small in frame. So the very first thing I did was removed him from the shot. Um, and then I embiggened him um, just to make him larger in the frame. And then I added a few fixes here and there and then added some highlights to him just so he looked like he was catching some of the light from that light streak, which is pending. So all of this is saved as a smart object. Which brings us back to this point here. So now we have to find a way to get the streak into this shot. And what I used was this new feature of Photoshop called the Sky Replacement. And it is amazingly good. So you just load up Sky Replacement, brings up this dialog box. And by default, it picks the last sky you've used, uh, which in this case is that streak shot. Um, and it does all the magic for you. Uh, it comes with a bunch of skies. And if you want to add your own, just expand that. Click on the plus and then select this, your uh, sky from your libraries. And when you click on OK, it actually gives you um, s this editable group uh, as a group called the Sky Replacement Group. And it has the new sky and some shading in here. Um, and that's basically what I used for mine. So let me get rid of this one and bring up my group. So with my group, I had the same settings that uh, the sky replacement tool gave me, but I also added a few uh, co uh, color adjustments and brightness and contrast settings just to bring out some of the highlights of that streak shot. I really wanted to get that glow. Um, it's a little 
more than what was there naturally, but I felt it kind of fit the, um, the comic book aesthetic that, uh, Iron Man has. And so once I'd had that, I just added a simple texture to uh, finish it off and give it a bit of that uh, roughness that I like to put in my work. And it also changed the uh, lighting focus and darkened up the sky and put the focus right on Iron Man. And that left me with the final shot. This was an epic adventure. I've learned a ton of things and I hope by following along, you've also learned a ton of things. If you enjoyed this, please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.